My name is Abby, and as you may have guessed from the slides, this talk is called Slots, 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 everybody. We are here to talk about slots. If you need more slots in your life, there are three ways to access this blog that has more information. It has a full walkthrough of web components because I can't cover that in 10 minutes, and how Angular uses slots. Here's a QR code to the slides that have all of those links. I will give you the QR code again at the end, as well as a link to the repo with all of the examples that I made today. So I should have started this with, hi, my name is Abby. I'm a former React dev. And I have been in Vue for about seven months at this point. Uh, React doesn't use slots. React actually recommends that you don't ever manipulate the HTML or JSX that you pass to a component, so don't manipulate the children prop. So when I came to Vue, it was a little difficult to wrap my head around what the heck slots were. I found that building web components really helped with this. Uh, they're part of the HTML spec. You may have heard about custom elements. That's part of it. If you build a slot in web components, it'll have three parts, a template tag, a slot tag, and a custom element with the shadow DOM. Because it's built into HTML, Chrome and Firefox DevTools allow you to inspect it. So if you build a web component and you play around with it, you can see exactly what changes right in the DevTools without installing anything. I found that helped a lot. That's in the blog. Vue and Angular saw web component spec and went, yes, and. We get tons of features in Vue. We're not talking about Angular. If you want to know about Angular, read the blog. So we're going to start with default slots. I have made some fallback content that is the word default. How did I do that? With a default slot. The component looks like this. There's a slot tag, and there's the word default in it. That's all you need to make fallback content in Vue. It's fantastic. So what if I want to change from default to, I don't know, my title? All I have to do? Whoop, is uncomment some content, any content, ever, and that'll be passed. That's what a slot does. That's what it exists for. But we don't just want to use the slot tag. We want to be able to determine what content goes into which slot and use multiple slots, right? To do that, we use named slots. In named slots, I have a slot with the name attribute, and I'm calling it title, because I'm putting it in H2. So anything I pass to the name slot will be in an H2 now. I also still have a default slot. So in a very highly technical way, I'm just going to comment that out and then add this one in. And we can see that now I'm using a template tag to access my named slot. To do that, I use a octothorpe or a hash sign with the name that I put in the name attribute. Now, it's going to look the same. But what if I want to dump some default content in there using my default slot? All I have to do is put it inside the component outside of that name, named template. So now we have my title and my default content. This will be relevant later. There is a way to use the template for the name slot with default slots. Shockingly, their name is default. So if you want to put content in your default slot using this syntax, it's the same. Beautiful. But you know, that's pretty basic, right? Vue doesn't stop there. They were like, we can make this so much better for you. So we started, whoop, already covered that, scope slots. You can still use a default slot in scope slots. Comment out that example. Go down to our scope slots example. And with scope slots, you can use the vslot attribute to pass props from your slots to the parent component that you're calling them in. in. So. I've got a script set up with some basic stuff. It's a counter, but we're calling it likes because I had a vague blog list example going that didn't really carry over. So 
I've got my light count, I've got my message, and I'm passing those up using slot props to default. Whatever content I want to put in my component will now have access to that information. So if we look at it now, I've got likes. I've got a number of likes. I can click the like button and increment, and my message will change. It's great. But you may be like, I don't like accessing properties on slot props. That seems gross. Luckily, JavaScript destructuring is here for you. We can access the number prop that we passed and the message prop that we passed and not access them as properties anymore. Same thing. Reload, same thing. And guess what? There's name slot syntax in scope slot. Slots. It looks exactly the same as it did before. But this time, instead of using the vslot attribute, we can pass the content we have directly to the slot we want it in using that same name slot syntax we were using before. And the destructuring still works. So with that, not only am I not styling something, hmm, but that example broke since I ran through this in the last 15 minutes. So, you know, it's there, it's happening. Oh, it's because I did not update the scope slot. Sorry. It's got a default slot. It's got the same syntax and commented that out. Beautiful. Now it works. We can still get the same behavior. And because I'm a recovering React dev, I have to tell you that if you have ever used a map to make a list using JSX, you never, ever have to do that again if you switch to view. So we go down here and we uncomment out my example. I have a list of products, right? And I can't tell you how many times I have taken data from an API and displayed it in a list on a page as a web developer, okay? So I want a default list component that I can do anything with. In the parent component, I decide how I want to display it. I decide what information I want to use. All this component does is make a list for me. I pass, I pass it a prop, we v4, so that we get our whole list, and then I pass information back up to the parent component using the item prop. So when I go back to my example, I decide that I want an H3 in this one. If it was on a different page, I couldn't use an H3, I need an H2, I'd be able to do that. I put it in a paragraph tag, I use a span, and I access all of that information from that item attribute. If I wanted to, again, not access properties like we did before, all I would have to do is use more attributes, props on my slot itself. And bada bing, bada boom, we got a list. It's beautiful, it's extensible, it's so not using a component to tell you exactly what that component has to do. You can build wrappers that will be reusable over and over and over again. And if I can find my slides, there you can use this to make renderless components. There's a view docs guide link here. Uh, there's smart components that don't render elements and only contain logic. In React, they're called higher order components before hooks came along. And I've definitely run into several apps with that smart, dumb component architecture. So slots beautifully work into that. So start thinking with slots, not props. That's all I got. Here's the link to the repo, QR code. Thank you.